Hey guys, Antonio from Real Men Real Style here, and I've got a guest for you, Tim Francis of Tim Francis Marketing, correct? You got it, timfrancismarketing.com. Isn't that, how did you come up with that name? <laughs> it's incredibly, incredibly creative. It's my first name, <laughs> my last name, and what I do. Can you believe it? I can believe it. No, t Tim has a great story. So he's, I got him, he's from Canada, another Canadian, and uh, Alberta as well, correct? That's right, uh, capital city, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. All right, and Tim is a former hockey player, correct? Yeah, and I also played varsity volleyball. I played college volleyball. And now you're running. Oh, the best part, Tim is a drum. Well, you love to drum, right? You, you are a drummer. I am a drummer. You got it. But now he's into marketing. And so I met Tim here in Arizona at InfusionCon. Had a great conversation. This guy is 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 really smart. So if you have any marketing questions, you reach out to this guy. Go check out his website. And uh, I can tell you, I'm definitely going to be uh, following up with this guy. But what I wanted to bring Tim and have him talk to you all about, tell a little bit about, I wanted him to tell you a little bit about his story, give you a little bit of information about uh, how, as a tall, thinner gentleman, he dresses sharp. Because Tim is uh, one of those guys who, when I saw him, I remembered his hair. And I remembered also, this guy is, he's taller than me, he's got a thin profile, but yet he was walking around with a lot of confidence. Every time I see this guy, he was talking, he's always talking to the ladies. I mean, he has no fear. He's not afraid to just go up to beautiful women anywhere and just start talking with them, which many of you guys I know are petrified of that. Other guys out there are smiling because they don't want me to give away the secret. That's the secret, guys. You just have to have the confidence to start talking with them, even if you, you don't know what you're saying. Just start talking to them. And uh, so, Tim, how did you get how did you get this confidence? Where did it come from? It's a interesting path. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much I want to reveal. You know, okay. My my, my, mom, my mom's may see this someday. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's there was actually a day I remember in high school when I it's, it was almost one of those moments where you catch yourself a reflection of yourself in a window or a mirror or something. And I just kind of noticed that I was kind of slumping. And immediately I thought to myself, like, no, I'll pull those shoulders back. And it felt a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning because life is habits and our, you know, we adapt, whether that's what time you get up in the morning or how you spend your money, the friends you keep, or even how you keep your posture. Okay, hold on. Bing, bing, bing. Life is habits. Great setting. Nice. <laughs> and furthermore, it's amazing how much um, from... Uh, gross to specific, specific to gross, or the outside to the inside, the inside to the outside. And it's amazing how if all you do is just try this out for fun, you don't have to keep it, you don't have to keep doing it, give it a shot, try just standing with a better posture and walking around with a better posture for like a day. And you might, your muscles might feel a little bit sore a little bit because you're using muscles you're not used to using. Right, your trapezius, rhomboids, the whole like posterior chain isn't used to being engaged like that. But and just observe how you feel, and then from there, as a secondary benefit, see how others react to you. Yeah, military guys can relate to this because we are, in a sense, trained and taught to stand basically with our shoulders back, chest out. And think about that. I mean, if you are think, look in the animal kingdom, the head lion. I mean, in in, in a pride. The lion that's on top, I mean, he walks around, he doesn't sulk around, he, he basically walks through, you get out of his way. And when you put your chest out, you put your shoulders back, you're basically making an announcement that, yeah, you are, you know, you're the guy on top. Uh, now, Tim, you also grew up in an area playing hockey. I mean, you're, you're wearing a pocket square, you're, you're dressing a bit sharp, you're, you definitely, you own what you're doing with your hair. Now, as a hockey player, is this how you dressed, or as a young man? Oh my goodness, no. And I, you know, my heart goes out to anybody who's kind of struggling. Uh, it, maybe if, if you're in a situation where all the guys dress the same, so that could be a corporate environment, if a gentleman is into his career years, or if a guy's younger and he's in high school. I know that when I played hockey in Canada, hockey in Canada is like football in the U.S., right? It is the sport. Except you're on ice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a few differences in the okay, way the game yeah. is played. That's right. <laughs> you know, I was counting on you for a joke yes, like that. Right. Yeah. And it's like there's this code, right? It's like you're in hockey, you're either like sulking around in your flip-flops and like your big baggy clothes or whatever. You got short hair and nobody wears earrings and it's like this code right so you've got a pocket square you've got earrings and you've got long <laughs> hair so if, so for most hockey guys if you started dressing like this 
you feel that your friends would come up and say, you know, what's going on here and slap you on the back of the head? Yeah, well, they'd be like, oh, hey, Francis, nice earrings, insert slur. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. It rhymes with rag. Yep. You know. I understand. understand. Yeah. They definitely, it, it's something in which, because you're standing out, but think about it, guys. You're, if you have, you've got to have a little bit of courage to stand out. Many of us don't want to start dressing sharp simply because we're afraid of what others are going to think. I'm sorry, but I'm here to tell you that if you want to, if you want to be great, if you want to do great things in this life, you've got to be a leader and you've got to stand out. You've got to be yourself. So uh, since let, let's talk about what happened. Okay. You had somebody tell you something that really changed the way you dress. Yeah, I'll share that story. And um, because your last point was such a good one, um, I'll share something. And I'm I'm really speaking to guys that might be on the younger side. Okay. okay? Um, when I was in grade nine, that was a really tough year for me. Um, I, I felt I got picked on a lot and there was one guy in particular that he was kind of a little bit of the leader, the, the, the clan, one of, you know, one of the cool guys. I was never like really on the inside. I was kind of on the periphery trying to be cool, yeah. but like, so I, I think most of us were there. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not alone. Yeah. <laughs> felt that way. And the, and yeah, this one particular guy I always aspired and he was always talking to the girls and the girls talking about him. And I just felt like, oh, like this guy is the guy that I would love to be if I was, if I could pick any person in my junior high, in my grade nine, I think yeah. you guys call it middle school or something. Yeah. So, uh, recently I started working out at CrossFit Lazarus. You interviewed Pete here yeah. on Real Men Real Style. Yeah. He owns the gym and I, I uh, like I'm 30. Okay. And so for 30 years, my family's called me Slim Tim. And I've always had this persona in my brain of who I am and what category I, you know, fit into. And I've always been the skinny guy who's kind of weak and all the rest. Well, um, I spent two years working out at CrossFit Lazarus up in Edmonton, Canada. And here on this trip, we've gone through San Diego, LA, and now we're here. Uh, Pete and I, we were traveling together to different marketing conferences. And we happened to go to Muscle Beach on Venice Beach, uh, Muscle Beach, the gym, on Venice Beach in California, right outside, uh, right part of Los Angeles, uh, greater area. And we were kind of joking around. So we took our shirts off, and we take this picture with no shirts on. I'm very white, so I knew I'd get ragged on by certain people in my family, friend circle, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I pulled off my shirt, and somebody snaps a pic. We throw it up on Facebook. It's part of our travel pics. Yeah. And I've gained 15 pounds of muscle. My body fat has been basically the same in the last two years, but that those extra 15 pounds. And the picture actually looks really nice. Like you can see definition in my shoulders. My shoulders are way bigger. Definition in my arms. You can see the, like the line between Guys, my Guys, I'm not going to be posting half-naked pictures of Tim <laughs> and, uh, and Pete on this. But I, I, th I definitely see your point. It's one of those things that we get stuck and it, we're limited by our mindset of what we can be and who we can become. And in two years, you're able to transform your body. Not a quick fix, not something, I mean, it was a lifestyle change, and you added some mass, and you're, you're probably a lot more confident. And you know who commented on that picture on Facebook? That guy from grade nine. Really? I, I have <laughs> not talked to him. The guy that I wanted to be, the guy that was like, you know, yeah. the icon of who I'd love to be in grade nine, and he was the king and all the rest. He comments on Facebook and he says, wow, man, you're looking super jacked, like way to go. And I'm just thinking like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So yeah. the other story that I shared with you earlier that you'd like yeah. me to share, um, and this is a little bit more of a quick fix story. Okay. And, and so I got this feedback. I got this feedback from somebody that, uh, so I was in a rock band. Uh, we toured, I was a professional drummer for a few years. It was really a cool experience. And you want to talk about... It gave me an excuse to try on wild clothes and to even be a new person, just like in a heartbeat. Yeah, I they, can imagine. Yeah, they, they don't know what I do by day, but by night, if I'm in some strange city or town or whatever, all of a sudden I can be anybody I want to be. Now, I'm going to give you a shortcut here that instead of taking 11 years to learn how to play drums, to be good enough to be able to tour and do all that kind of things, just take my story and stand on my shoulders so you don't have to go through the long process. So I got some feedback that even though I was in this band and everything, that I looked like a college kid. And it's like, are you really going to take it serious? Like if you think of Tommy Lee, right? You think of Tommy Lee, the drummer of Motley Crue, one yeah. of the most iconic drummers 
not just because of his playing, but his lifestyle in the L.A. and yeah. Pamela Anderson and, you know, the whole thing, right? Yeah. I might be dating myself to some of the viewers, but he is not a college kid. You make no mistake. This is Tommy Lee, right? And imagine if he's sitting behind the, the drums and he's wearing, like, a Hollister t-shirt and, like, Old Navy shorts and he's got, like, a lame, you know, like, it's just, like, that is not at all rock and roll. That's, like, a college kid look. Yeah. Okay. And um, somebody told me that, that that's how I came off. And it really hit me. And so I kind of took a step back and I started thinking, okay, what are, what are the drummers, you know, who I am aspiring to have the same effect? So what were the things that you did exactly to, in a sense, Peacock? And there's a guy uh, yep. called The Game. Uh, Neil Strauss talks about uh, something like that. But you, there were certain things that you did yep. and you went out and bought and they changed your style and the way people perceived you. Absolutely. And the further I went, the more reaction I got. So the first thing I did was instead of, uh, instead of wearing always like, um, like, you know, say a polo, right? Like a Lacoste polo yeah, yeah. on its own or, um, stuff with no collar threw a collar on, like get a, get a button up shirt with a collar. And that immediately took things up to the next level. Or if, have you guys ever heard me talk about this, a button up shirt with a collar? <laughs> I go back. I've, Probably 200 videos on it. <laughs> no. Okay, so and, and I, I didn't even know you had that many videos on the collar. I probably do. No, okay, I, well then. we, Or at least I'm wearing one. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so you got the collared shirt. Yeah. Pretty simple. Okay. There yeah.